I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church, and today in our worship service 275 of January 30th, 2022, the topic of this morning is, God, if you don't give me, and once we start the service, I would like you to download the bulletin if you can. You can go to the website or simply use the QR code on the screen, download the bulletin, and follow the teaching of this morning. I want to thank you one more time for your support. What we do is possible thanks to your help, especially you, dear church members. It is beautiful that you help us all the time, and uh, thank you so much. For anyone who is interested in helping us at the same time, we invite you to do it, going to the website, sending a text message. On, the number is on the screen. And, uh, well, you know, it is wonderful that we can do this together. My beautiful Victory Church members, thank you so much. Thank you, Sebastian, for the work that you do with all our broadcasts. And thank you, Tracy, for the music and songs that we are using to worship the name of our Lord God. Amen. God, if you don't give me. You know, the image on the screen is self-explanatory. But it's exactly what happens in many, many cases today. There are individuals, you know that, that they just say, if the Lord God doesn't give me this, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's a constant threatening to God and to people, and they operate that way in, in every context, unfortunately. And uh, that is sad. It is like uh, when you are listening to a kid, right? And sometimes this, the thing is, we are the adults acting like kids, saying, give me. Give me this. Give me that. Not necessarily is, is, uh, it's an object, something material. It could be anything, but it is that idea. And give it to me now or else. <laughs> and it's uh, sad, but, uh, but it's true. Sometimes the threat comes from uh, many grown-ups all the time that are acting in a very uh, strange way. You know, for instance, uh, some, some adults, when they are in need of food, and then I'm not talking about those who, because of uh, metabolism issues or anything like that, it's just uh, the lack of maturity. They act like little kids. Give me my food. Give me my food. You know, so, some adults act that way. And, uh, well, the same thing happens with uh, investors. So sometimes individuals that are willing to go in business with others, they say, you know, I I'll do it. I will invest the money. I will give you this money so you do this project. But I, but I want profits. And, and I want them quickly. I want them now. <laughs> they don't take into consideration that there is always a, a process in everything. They, they, whomever is doing the, the project is doing, it takes time. And uh, the similar situation happens sometimes in, in homes with husbands that are pushing their wives for having sex with them. They are demanding and demanding, and they, they make tremendous problems in the house if they don't get what they want. It, it, it is exactly like that. Adults acting like, like little kids. And... Uh, you see the same thing happening, for example, in the traffic. And you have seen that. This particular driver that is acting so immaturely because he wants to go first. And, and they are not considering anything. Sometimes it's about parking in a spot. And you just can't believe what those people are doing. In occasions, the scenario changes in a home when it is the wife demanding money for something that she wants and that she doesn't want to consider any other things, uh, responsibilities uh, that there, there has to be fulfilled. They have to be fulfilled and that they just say, give me the money. I want to buy this. And it's exactly the same thing, the immaturity. 
like happens in the workplace from time to time with employees. They just don't care what's the situation with the company. They just say, I want more benefits. Give me this. And they push and push and push. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes those uh, attitudes and in, in general, the, the, the way that employees can, can lead a company can make a big disaster and bring the company to a total chaos. <laughs> you, you don't want that with your employer. But, but it's exactly what, uh, what we are saying, you know, is grown-ups acting very, very childish. Like it uh, happens in the stores, and probably you have seen that, a customer that they, they, he wants attention. She wants attention. She wants people to do something about the request. Like there is no other customer in the store. And, uh, and they want that right now. And what can we say about uh, fans of uh, sport teams being so frustrated because their team doesn't win? And you see tremendous reactions from uh, certain <laughs> groups of fans that are totally immature, very, very childish. <laughs> now, if you're wondering, well, that's true. Are there any examples in the Bible of this kind of behavior? <laughs> the answer is yes. And I'm going to give you some, some examples here, but let's just start with this particular king, uh, Balak. And Balaam is the story of these two individuals. Uh, poof, this guy, he was a king. And his desire was, was that God will curse Israel. He wanted to be the one defeating Israel. The story is, uh, is very, very interesting, and you can read it totally in the chapters 22 through 24 in the book of Numbers. And uh, so he decided to hire a prophet of God. Yes, you, you listen correctly. He decided to hire a prophet of God. Imagine that. And the worst part about it is that the prophet kind of went along with the idea. Let me see if, if I can do that. I'm not certain, he said. Imagine that. It's a prophet of God, knowing that Israel was blessed by the Lord. And he was wondering, you know, maybe God will change his mind and I can curse Israel. So let me find out. But I'm not sure, he said. So he was kind of playing both sides, you know. And he did it. He attempted it the first time and the second time and the third time. And the king uh, who hired him, who was, of course, offering money because that was the whole intention of his thing, right? I'm going to give you money, but I want to defeat the people of Israel. This king was highly frustrated, highly frustrated. And, and actually, I want to show you here on the screen in the chapter 22, verses 10 through 11, it says that when Balak heard this, because Balaam said, no, I cannot do that. He angrily struck his fist against his hand and said to Balaam, <clears throat> like that, I called you to come and curse my enemies, but you have blessed them. You have blessed them three times. Now leave and go home. I told you that I will give you a very good payment, but the Lord has caused you to lose your reward. <laughs> so he was aware that it was the Lord's decision. And now he says, well, you are not blessed. You don't have that reward because of your Lord, because of God. Imagine that. Ex first example that I can show you in the scripture. Now, there is, another, there is another example, and this is the example of a king. This king who wanted to know where the prophesied baby will be born to kill the baby talking about Jesus. This story is, is told in the chapter number two of the Gospel of Matthew. And this is, this is one of the passages. But Herod, this, this king, he wanted to kill baby Jesus. And so he was trying to figure it out. Where, where, where? And uh, when he couldn't find out the, the truth of the matter, just an area and more or less a season, 
he decided to do something absolutely horrendous. He gave orders to have all the babies, boy babies, being killed. What do you think about that? Is that horrible or what? Let me tell you, it's, it's terrible. Let's read it here in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16. Herod saw that the wise men had fooled him, and he was very angry. So he gave an order to kill all the baby boys in Bethlehem and the whole area around Bethlehem. Herod had learned from the wise men the time the baby was born. It was now two years from that time. So he said to kill all the boys who were two years old and younger. The cruelty of men when they don't get what they want. That is what we are talking about today. God, if you don't give me what I want, I'll do certain things. <laughs> there is another story here. This is the story written in the chapter 14 of Matthew. It's about a woman who hated John the Baptist. And why is that? Well, because she was married to another guy, but now she's living with his brother. Did you hear that? It's not just adultery. Adultery with his husband's brother. Terrible. And John the Baptist said to the people and confronted her and the king, this is wrong. What you guys are doing is absolutely wrong. And of course, this woman is, is very angry. So she decided, I'm going to do something here. <laughs> well, she did some manipulations, put the daughter to dance in front of everybody. And the king said, I will give you anything you ask. And of course, it was bait. And he made the mistake. He promised something and now he needed to do it. Matthew chapter 14 verses 9 through 11 tells us that King Herod was very sad because he wanted to kill John the Baptist, apparently. <laughs> but he had promised to give the daughter anything she wanted. And the people eating with Herod had heard his promise. So he ordered that she ask to be done what she asked to be done. So he sent men to the prison where they cut off. They cut off John's head. And the men brought John's head on a plate and gave it to the girl. Then she took the head to her mother, Herodias. What kind of people are those? Examples in the Bible that you say, wow, they are evil people. Evil people that they act in such a way when they don't get what they want. But uh, if you are wondering, are examples in our era? The, the answer, yes, there are examples in our era. Hitler is one of those. He wanted to destroy all the Jews in the world. And he decided to start this campaign, irrational, evil campaign. And that was good part of the beginning of a world, world war putting nations against nations because of the ambition of these men. He wanted something. And this was something absolutely cruel, barbaric. Examples in this era. You say, well, that was something else, right? Well, sadly, there are other examples, you know, and you see that, uh, for example, with Lance Armstrong who he wanted to be a champion no matter what. And it's sad because we know the story, how he used drugs and cheated to the point that he was a champion again and again and again, and the admiration and rewards and money and all that came to him until he was caught. And then it was very sad. <laughs> And what can we tell about politicians that are corrupt? Politicians that they destroy their countries 
for money and power. They want something and they will go against anything. They will do whatever they want to do in order to obtain something, in order to get something. But the truth, my friends, is that whether it's examples in the Bible or examples in, in our era of people that we know, they always get the punishment that they deserve because nothing and nobody will escape from the punishment of God. So let me ask you about uh, people that you may know, examples around you. Do you know someone who lost his job because he was so stubborn? Do you know someone that lost uh, even someone, a family member or the entire family? He lost everything because of the blindness and stubbornness. It happens, right? Can you think of somebody that you know that lost everything because of his stubbornness? I want this. <laughs> It's so dangerous. That route is absolutely dangerous. God, if you don't give me, I'll do this. It's absolutely dangerous, my friend. And what about individuals that uh, they were not willing to negotiate a reconciliation? They just didn't. There were problems and there were attempts to negotiate a reconciliation in a company or with the family, the spouse perhaps, or maybe with uh, partners in business. They, they were trying to negotiate a reconciliation, but, but this person said, no, this is what I want. And as a result of that, lost it, everything, lost it. Lost it. And what about individuals that have died because they refuse to change their bad habits? And there are many bad habits, but let's, let's talk about the things that uh, affect the most. is everything that we put inside of our systems. Substances that we are inhaling, things that we are drinking, Stuff that is bad for our health. And people tell us constantly that that's not good for you. But this is what I want. Do you know anyone that have died because of that? They didn't want it to change their habits. Whatever the bad habit was. It's just this idea, this wrong idea that some people have. I got to do it my way. And then there are consequences of that. There is no need for that. So to what degree is a good idea to try to impose what you want? Do you understand this? You have desires, right? You have goals in life. You are longing for certain things and, and you are working hard in order to achieve certain goals. But to what degree is a good idea to try to impose what you want? When and how can you determine there is a limit for that thing? You know, circumstances are going to tell you. Sound advice is important. Feedback. People talking to you. Because sometimes that desire can become an idol in your heart, and then you destroy everything because you want to do that. To what degree is a good idea to try to impose what you want? To what degree? I would like to invite you, since we are talking about things, <laughs> about the next service. Next week in Worship Service 276, February 6, 2022, the topic will be the true gospel. What is the true gospel? I would like to explain to you next Sunday. I know you will like it. It's going to be a good message.
Returning to what we were discussing, right? To what degree it is a good idea to impose what we want? That takes us to another question, which is, do I have rights to want things? Do I have the right to desire certain things for my life? And the answer is, of course, you have that right. You have the right to dream. You have the right to wish for certain things. You have the right to conceive ideas and develop uh, projects that you feel is what you want to do with your life. You have the right, of course. And, and in fact, I want you to know that the Lord God is offering you good things. If you read in Jeremiah 29, 29 11, it says clearly that the Lord has plans for you and they are plans to prosper you and to give you good, abundant life. The Lord has plans for you. So there is no question about the goodness of God and His desires for you to get things, to move forward in life, to obtain certain things, material things, and also sentimental things, spiritual things, and many things that you can get in life. The Lord wants you to have many things, but the thing is, how, how, do you, how can you tell? How can you know what is what the Lord wants for you? That's a very interesting question, don't you think? Because if you are sitting there thinking, you know what, it's really dangerous to be just wanting things, desiring things, you know, what if this is, is not what the Lord wants? How can you tell? I'm going to give you more scriptures that will help you to understand what is and what is not what the Lord wants for you. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Do not conform to this pattern, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you test and approve what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. It is all about the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind when you are not thinking like the people in the world think. And what is the, the number one thing people in the world think and want? Pleasing themselves. Pleasing themselves. That is the priority number one of people in the world. I want to please myself no matter what. It has nothing to do with pleasing the Lord. But on the contrary, when you are thinking, how can I please the Lord? You will find that it is easy, actually. It's when you renew your mind and you stop thinking of the things of this world as a priority. You start to think more and more about the spiritual things, the things that have to do with your heart, the things that have to do with eternity, the things that have to do with God, the spirituality of life. And how can you share more and more about God with everybody else? That is the renewing of, in your mind, you know, thinking godly, not just in worldly things. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 3, section B says, don't think that you are better, better than you really are. You must see yourself as, as you are. Because the problem is this, if you are thinking that you are better than probably many or everybody else, maybe you think that you are really, really great, you start to get this wrong idea in your head that you deserve everything, that everyone is there to serve you, that everyone is there to give you. You know, that is sometimes the problem that people with lots of money have, people that are in positions of authority have, people that are beautiful have, People that are smart and knowledgeable about things have. Anyone that is in a place of honor 
suddenly feels that everybody else is there to serve them. And then is when they get this wrong idea that they are better than what they really are. You must see yourself just as you are. And God will help you to, to see that, my friend. The Lord will help you. Let me share one other passage that will be very, very beneficial for you to help you understand all this. Psalms, Psalm 135, verses 6 and 7. The Lord does whatever He wants in heaven and on earth, in the seas and the deep oceans. He brings the clouds from the other side of the earth. He sends the lightning and the rain, and He opens the doors to release the winds. This passage talks very clearly about the authority of God on earth. In heaven, of course, but especially here on earth, related with how he controls the seas, the oceans, the clouds, lightning, winds. The Lord God is in full control. Whenever you are watching what's going on outside, or you check the weather, the forecast. You need to remember this passage because the one who says this is going to happen and this is not going to happen is the Lord God. He is in full authority of what's going on, on, on in heaven and on earth. Here on earth. And that includes everything. He is in full control of all situations. And here we are, we say, God, if you don't give me what I want, what? <laughs> it is very dangerous, I told you that. And unfortunately, when we go through seasons like that, we have to face the consequences of that. And then we say, oh, that was a bad idea. In Romans chapter 9, verses 20, section B, and 21, section A, there is a very powerful statement. It says, A clay jar does not question the one who made it. It does not say, Why did you make me like this? The one who makes the jar can make anything he wants. We are not here to question in God. We are not here to tell them why this and why that. Of course, we do sometimes. But unfortunately, immature people, they is the only thing that they can think of. Basically, because they say, I want things my way. You saw the examples that I show you in the Bible. People in authority being so childish. We talk about the examples in our era. People with power, people with gifts, and yet they say, I'm, I want this. Very childish. How in the world is it that we will act that way, my friend? If you are a believer, you cannot act that way. You have to stop that. Stop pushing to get what you want. And always the prayer is, bless what I am doing, Lord. Bless me while I am doing this. Bless this, bless that. And you know, most of the time it has to do with money. <laughs> most of the time it has to do with material things. Most of the time it has to do with things related with pleasures of the flesh, pride. Most of the time it has to do with things that are worldly. They are not the spiritual desires most of the time. And then we say, why, Lord? Why this? Why that? That, that is something that has to be changed. So, 
When will you surrender to God's authority, my friend? Do you think that will come the day when you simply will surrender to God? That you will stop this constant arguing with God about this and about that? Because you don't have this or you don't have that. Because somebody else has this and somebody else has that. They have those things. Why I don't have them, God? Not always it's about material things. Sometimes it's because somebody has somebody else in their lives. Married people, for example, happily married. Or somebody else has children. Or good health. Or somebody is, is very smart. And somebody else is very pretty. And then the, argue, the argument with God is about that. Why this person is so pretty, I'm not. Why this person is so smart and I'm not. Why this person is so healthy and I am not. Why this person has this and I don't. Why you gave them these people those things and you don't give me those things. Why? It's a constant battle. And it's a very childish battle. You have to stop, my friend. You have to stop this. It's always about what you want. Always about what you want. If today you listening and watching, you are starting to reflect about that mistake you are making. I want to tell you this. It's good thinking. It's a good thing that you stop that kind of thinking and surrender to the good Lord. Because it's the right thing to do, to surrender. And everything begins, my friend, when we acknowledge that we are sinners. Everything will restart for you the moment that you say, Lord, I see my sin. I can see how wrong is what I am doing. And I need to change. But I need your forgiveness, Lord God. Do you realize that that is why the Lord Jesus died? The whole purpose of his life was to die for you. But it is going to be excellent. Is going to be superb for you when you realize that you are doing what is wrong. You know, as, as a truth, as a concept, as a theological point, as a fundamental doctrine point, point that the Lord Jesus died for us, well, we say, yes, praise the Lord. But as a truth coming into your heart that will change you and transform you, that is different. And that is what I am talking about. That is not just a truth, a theological truth out there that Jesus died for you, but becomes a reality. But it's not going to work. Unless you surrender, unless you confess your sins, unless you admit that you are wrong, then is when you will be able to truly repent, changing your life. Rather than living all the time to please yourself and looking for what can you get out of this situation, you will become more considerate towards the Lord. You will become more considerate towards everybody, you will become a good church member. You will be part of the church. You will be an active part of the church. You will attend the services. You will come to worship God in person. You will reconnect with others and connect with new friends because you will understand that that is what the Lord wants for you. 
John 3.16. A wonderful verse. I hope you surrender today and receive Jesus in your heart, the power of the Holy Spirit in your heart. I thank you for being here with me today. This message is Worship Service 275, January 30th, 2022. God, if you don't give me, what if you share this with somebody else? Thank you so much for being here. And from Odessa, Texas, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church, Victory Church, and everyone else here, my wife, my team, we say thank you so much for watching and connecting. See you next time. Hey, 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 hey. That's all, that's all, that's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao.